happy happy friday everyone i hope you're having a great week and uh, jumping in with today's live video on how to get out of overwhelm and stress uh, it is definitely uh, one of those things that can really pull us up, really stop us, and make us feel kind of confused or as if we're walking around in circles, not getting too much done. Um, one of the big things with overwhelm is that we are looking at way too much uh, at the one time and it's, it's a huge challenge. Hey Simone, great to have you on here. Hey gorgeous Erica, lovely to see you on here, hun. Um, when, when we are in that overwhelm, we're looking at far too much. Uh, and if you thought about everything that you needed to do uh, either in a month or a year and you wrote that all down on a list or you had that cycling in your head, I can assure you it would take you immediately into overwhelm. Now often what actually happens with overwhelm is uh, it's associated generally with a huge big life change as well and that in itself can often be overwhelming uh, good morning to everybody jumping on hey Alison lovely to see you hey Yvonne hey Christy lovely to have you on here darling and gorgeous Kate lovely to see you on here honey uh, and Sandra and Bells how are you sweetheart I haven't seen you for ages and M lovely lovely to have you all on guys so um, if this really resonates for you or you often find that you are overwhelmed, please send me some love uh, just so I can know how, um, how much this resonates for you guys as well. And please pop down if there's anything specifically that you would like addressed. Hopefully we'll get to cover uh, quite a lot with this because it is really, really, really important. Um, obviously taking us out of that overwhelm because like I said it is paralyzing um, and we often end up feeling like we're, we're so foggy in the brain from so much kind of going on and feeling so super stressed that uh, it, it does feel difficult to move forward or to feel like you can actually make progress now like I said at the start if you were looking overwhelm always comes from trying to look at too much or trying to do too much at the one time um, if you sat down and thought oh yes I'm gonna eat a whale uh, not a great analogy I'm fully aware <laughs> but like if you actually thought about that that would be overwhelming right um, and so you've just got to start chunking things down that's the number one one tip and I'm going to share a few different ways that you can actually do that but it is because you're looking at too much at the one time the other um, biggest tip that I love and I utilize a lot and has certainly helped helped me step out of living in continual stress because if you are overwhelmed and you are living in stress you are constantly reacting to life it's like everything's coming at you and it's almost okay a better analogy for you is it's like the waves in the at the beach and if you haven't taken the time to found find your um, center to find your footing the next wave will walk, knock you over my goodness my words are funny this morning the next wave will knock you over before you've got time to actually stand up and so that's where life starts to feel um, very overwhelming where the waves just kind of keep coming and you feel like you you haven't had that chance to reground or recenter yourself or get stable again within yourself before you can kind of deal with the next thing that's coming um, and so it's really, really uh, important as well. Hey Steve, great to have you on here. And hey Marilyn, great to have you on here as well. So one of the first steps is knowing uh, your quadrants. Uh, Stephen Covey talked a lot about the four quadrants. I'm gonna run through them super quick, but I would definitely um, advise jumping onto YouTube after this and watching a video um, on the four quadrants by Stephen Covey. Um, Stephen has now passed, but he left a, an amazing legacy. Uh, and it is just a really powerful, simple tool of how to actually step out of that. Now, the first thing that I share with my clients um, and also do for myself, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, if I've got a lot going on, or if I've got multiple projects that I'm doing or a lot of life areas that I'm creating shifts and changes in, and I've got a couple of those areas in my life at the moment, um, some of them are not so urgent or not, um, you know, life-changingly, uh, like, um, uh, drastic if it all falls apart. Um, it's, you know, I can have another run at things. It's, it's not going to be a big deal. Um, but other times in life, and I've certainly been in that place before where it felt like my very life, my very survival and the survival of my kids actually really depended on me being able to execute or me being able to get through whatever it is that I needed to get through. Now, 
two things that overwhelm us can be our mental emotional state or our physical state so if you don't feel like you've got the physical energy to move towards or to get through what you physically need to um, or that you feel that you you, you should or you have to um, that can be really overwhelming or mentally emotionally you don't feel like you've got the emotional capacity to deal with that and often obviously those are very interlinked as well because if you're not feeling great physically that's going to affect your emotions or if you're not feeling great emotionally that's also going to affect your physical energy and the resources that you have physically to put towards that so the first thing that I talk about doing um, is absolutely get everything out of your head down on paper recycling lists in your head in itself in its very nature is stressful and overwhelming even if you're trying to run the grocery list right um, get it down on paper guys like do not try and recycle thoughts in your head so you don't forget it either schedule it get it in your diary get a calendar or get a, like a physical diary whatever you need to do but get it out of your head now the first thing that I share with my clients is to do a brain dump so I look at all my life areas I write down home environment I write down health I write down um, wealth or finance um, I write down relationships I write down my business I write down um, my spirituality I write down my growth I write down any other projects as such that I'm kind of working on so at the moment um, I'm preparing to move up to the Sunshine Coast at the end of the year um, so I'm doing a lot of research on um, properties and, and different things in the actual area where I'm wanting to live there's a, a lot of that I'm working on some really big health goals for myself and I've set myself some really big goals in my business this year as well so um, like I said any challenge changes that we make will feel overwhelming because a it's new and b we have to learn something so it can often feel that we're going too slow compared to where we were previously so number one do the brain dump get it all down write list down um, or have headings on that piece of paper I often just use like an A4 piece of paper good morning good morning to everybody jumping on hey Jamie and Heather and Samantha and Di lovely to see you guys on here thanks so much for jumping on hey Joe and Martha and yes I think I said hello to everybody else um, so uh, definitely get it down on paper under your life areas because those life areas are also going to prompt you hey do I need to set an appointment for my health do I need to go get blood tests do I need to take measurements do I need to um, finally phone up and, and make that booking with the PT or do I need to join the gym or do I need to get some home equipment or whatever it is wealth wise it might be hey do I need to get my will sorted or power of attorney or um, do I need to make sure that my supers all um, you know performing in its best way possible not split up into like 50 different types of super um, it might be organizing um, you know your tax or organizing your bookkeeping or like there's obviously so many different things but it will prompt you by writing down those headings it'll prompt you and then get everything out the second thing that I tell uh, or share with people, not tell people, <laughs> you're at full choice as to whether you do this or not, um, is to then go through and see what actually can be deleted, delegated, or things that you actually in fact need to do. Often there are things that we can delegate or we can ask for help with if you've got a lot going on in your life or you've got some major life changes uh, I know at one point in my life like even just moving moving house is overwhelming like there is so much that it feels like oh my god we've got to break it down we've got to chunk it down which will be the following steps in a minute but the first part is just get everything out of your head anybody that you need to contact anybody that you need to book in with anybody that you need to phone anybody that can help you um, that way you can delegate perhaps a couple of things or you can ask for help around um, or sometimes we have stuff cycling in our head that's actually not important to us but for some reason we've made it a, like a, a to-do thing so get that down on paper next 
thing that you actually do after this is run the filter of the four quadrants. Now you're going to love this guys. So many of my clients resonate this, particularly when they come to me and say, Oh my God, I'm so stressed. I feel like I'm procrastinating. I feel like I can't get anything done. I feel like I just like drop into the Facebook scroll hole occasionally. Um, so <laughs> if that's you now, um, jump off Facebook, come back, watch me later at a time that's kind of going to work for you. Um, often, you know, we can do that. Um, uh, but maybe you want to watch this so that <laughs> you can obviously get out of the overwhelm. But four quadrants. Hey, Willow, great to have you on here. And hey, Katrin, lovely to have you on as well too, darling. Uh, big love this morning. Um, so the next step, um, <laughs> now I've gone blank with everything that I was saying. So we've got everything down on paper. We go through and we do delegate or delete. So you want to highlight the things that you're going to delegate. You want to cross off the things um, that you're going to delete and you want to highlight in a different color the things that you need to take care of or that you need to do. Um, next, we run the filter of the four quadrants. So number one, quadrant one, is it's urgent and important. It is going to have dire consequences if you do not deal with it today. That's like if the phone rings and your child's sick at school, that's like the bank manager ringing and say, hey, guess what? You haven't paid your last four home installments or mortgage repayments or rent. Um, we need to have a conversation. That's your spouse saying, I'm kind of at the point, a breaking point, um, like this, we need to have a conversation. You know, these are like dire, dire, dire consequences. Um, so think about the things on your list or the things on your to-do list. Are they quadrant one? Are they urgent and are they important? They are going to have dire consequences if you do not deal with it today. Now this is reactive mode, this is bushfire mode. Now what happens is most people live thinking everything is quadrant one. They're very reactive, everything's a stress, everything's a push, we've scheduled way too much into our diary or we're expecting way too much or we're rushing. It's just our emotional state that has actually created massive overwhelm or feeling like we've got way too much to do in a day. If you're a high achiever, high performer, a type personality, I can promise you, you'll probably be living this way unless you've consciously made different choices in your life, simply because we put so much expectation, so much internal pressure, which sometimes feels like external pressure upon ourselves. Perhaps you have a lot to do at work, but again, if you're feeling so overwhelmed, you're not going to have the clarity, you're not going to have the focus, and you're not going to be nearly as productive as what you wish uh, that you could be. Hey, Marguerite, great to have you on here. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Helen. And hey, Carol, lovely to see you guys on here as well. And I will be jumping on with Marguerite at 2 AAA FM at 10.40 this morning as well. So check out 2 AAA FM. Uh, Marguerite is an amazing, amazing host and presenter on that show, and I always love listening to her. Um, so uh, jumping back to quadrant two now, quadrant two is it is important, but it's not urgent. Now guys, this is the sweet spot. This is where you wanna be spending about 70% of your time. My life changed exponentially when I started living about 70% or more of my time from quadrant two. Now quadrant two is you are clear on the goals that you have, you're clear on where you're going, and therefore, now you have daily consistent habits that you're actively spending time on that are not urgent because you're just taking care of stuff before it gets to bushfire stage, right? Or before it gets to putting out fires or being super reactive. Now you're being proactive. Now you're anticipating the road ahead and now you're you're looking at things and going, okay, if this is where I want to be with my health, these are the things that I need to do on a daily consistent basis. If these are the things, if this is where I want to be with my wealth, these are the other habits that I need to do on a weekly, monthly, or daily consistent basis. So it's really starting to chunk down. Now, don't try and do all of the life areas all at once. Again, that's going to be overwhelming. Less is often more when we're trying to create big changes in our life as well. Um, <laughs> Looking forward to, sorry, my eyes are shocking this morning, Marguerite. I'm going to have to put on my glasses to read that. Yes, absolutely, darling. I can't wait to see you then either. Um, that does make it a lot easier for reading everybody's names as well. So, um, obviously, quadrant two, it's, 
are important but it's not urgent. Quadrant three is, and you may find you might be taking on quite a lot of quadrant three activities. Quadrant three activities are things like it is urgent but it's not important. Now, that generally is other people's emergencies that become your urgencies. That's the girlfriend that rings up at the last second and goes, oh my God, I totally forgot to organize a sitter. Oh, can you just have the kids for a couple of hours? <laughs> um, like that is so not cool. And if you're used to having lots of kind of quadrant three people in your life, and I, I say this with absolute love and compassion, Personal boundaries is so, so, so important. Never ever have the conversation with that person in the emergency, that will not go well. Um, particularly if you made them become dependent on you. So you've put your hand up multiple times, you've never said no, or you rarely say no, so you've actually made them dependent on you. And honestly, there'll be a part of you that feels important or special because of that but if you are ending up be feeling like um, angry or resentful afterwards I can promise you it is not serving you and is not serving the relationship so what we need to do when we're in that place if you've got some quadrant three things in your life it's really having a conversation a pre-frame conversation before the next crisis or emergency happens and just say hey love you so much if you are needing my assistance I'm making some changes in my life because I've realized a lot of the things that are really important to me, I'm actually not spending a lot of time on. And in future, I'm going to need one day, two days, five days, seven days, or whatever it needs to be um, for you personally, notice in order to be able to help you out. Would love to still be able to help you out or maybe it's not a good fit for you to help them out anymore. If that's the case, just let them know, hey, you might need to find an alternative solution. Um, just I'm, I'm actually making some changes and I won't be able to do that anymore. Um, I'm focusing in this particular life area. You don't, even, you don't need to justify, you don't need to defend. The truth never needs defending at all. Good morning, Bo, lovely to have you on here. Um, so it really is about um, drawing those personal boundaries though and not getting caught up in other people's emergencies if they've not taken the time to get clear and to put things in place to support themselves either. Now number four is it's not urgent and not important and you might be like well, why would I spend any time there? Quadrant four is a land of distraction, procrastination and escapism. It is when we are constantly living in quadrant one, being reactive to everything that you need to escape your life. Now this might be falling into the Facebook scroll hole for 10 minutes, it might be sitting down reading a trashy magazine, it might be watching TV, um, you know, it could be just like vegging out on the lounge, it could be anything, just if it's not chosen consciously, I've got no judgment around any of that stuff. Um, I quite often, you know, enjoy having a quick flick through, through Facebook or, you know, something else. Um, but if it's not chosen consciously, and because when it's chosen consciously, it's like, hey, this is my chill time, this is my relaxed time, it becomes a quadrant two activity. But if you're not doing it consciously, if you're just like, defaulting there or falling back into procrastination or just distraction it is because you've been living in quadrant one so much that your system is so stressed rather than quadrant two where you're taking care of all the things hey megan great to have you on hey paul and hey dan super important guys um so run go through your list and figure out what are my quadrant ones, what are my quadrant two, what are my quadrant three, and what are my quadrant four things on here. Now you may not have quadrant four things on there, um, but take note if you are defaulting to quadrant four um, a lot, simply because it's about starting to implement. And now this is not a necessarily a quick change, guys, but I can promise you it will be sustainable and maintainable long-term if you stick to the process. Um, simply because often when we've been living in quadrant one with everything, it can be challenging to actually start to implement a few of the quadrant two things. And this is where less is more because you want to get a little bit of traction. You want to set yourself up to succeed. And for me to convert my life from a quadrant one life to a quadrant two life, living about 70% there, um, it took me about six months probably even a little bit longer, but I started to get really clear of what are the daily habits that I needed to be doing to be living from quadrant two, um, and everything got a whole lot calmer. 
everything got a whole lot calmer um, because I was no longer in reactive mode now I felt happy with myself now I felt like I was progressing now I increased my confidence and my ability to deal with things so if there were quadrant one things that arise I could quickly deal with those things or there might be only one or two kind of quadrant one things on my list and therefore I could spend so much more time in quadrant two now most of my days um, I'm very much high level quadrant two stuff. I take amazing care of my health. I'm very proactive with my morning routine, very proactive with my emotional well being and my mental well being, constantly up leveling or challenging myself on where's the next thing that I need to release or let go of, being acutely aware of behaviors, um, patterns that keep showing up for me that aren't serving me, and then doing the work on those things. Um, so, all of those things absolutely serve at a high level. So, after you've gone through, you've got your list done, you now know what's your quadrant one, now you know where to start. If you do have a lot of quadrant one things, you're gonna to wanna to start to schedule and plan these things. And I would certainly advise scheduling and planning everything on your list because your system will get so much calmer when it realizes, hey, there's a place and a time when I can get all of this done. Now, the other thing that can kind of um, trip you up a little bit, or certainly it trips me up, hey Caroline, hey Katie, and uh, so uh, <laughs> glad that that's really helping capture, and it's an amazing um, uh, thing, and yeah, Quadrant 2 totally is ease and grace zone, and it is so, so, so good, I totally agree with you. Um, so planning and scheduling so super important um, I take time at the start of my week every week on a Sunday afternoon I sit down and I look at the week ahead and I look at what have I got coming up because I want to be anticipating the road ahead if I'm running a retreat or a workshop I will block out time the following day or for the next couple of days after that particular experience because I know my energy is going to be a little bit flatter, I'm going to have less focus and less energy available to put towards other things. Now if I've got, um, a, like I'm doing a 42k walk, uh, that's in at the start of April, I did a lot of training last week, I had like 68 kilometers that I walked last week. Now you might be like, oh my god, that's so much time. It was, but I did most of it on the treadmill and I started to combine my goals of getting some books read, of doing some courses that I was wanting to do, I was actually even doing some blog posts and um, doing some different things on there as well. So sometimes I much prefer um, to walk out in nature. Other times it's like, hey, I've got a fair bit on. This is how I can get this done and that done at the same time. And that's where life starts to get really cool, where you can combine several different goals um, in or several different actions towards different goals or maybe the one action and it can kind of hit several different goals if that makes sense. So it's very, very powerful. Good morning, Joe. Great to have you on. Hey, Marianne. Hey, Pete. Um, really really cool to take the time but the biggest thing if you are in overwhelm guys it is you are looking at way too much um, and honestly like when I was moving through some of the uh, the deepest moments of grief um, you know getting through 10 minutes was uh, you know that was it was way too overwhelming to think about like trying to get through the whole day so if you are moving through really big emotional stuff Please be kind and gentle to yourself. Take care of your physical body. That's what brings so much emotional and mental stability or brings a lot more mental and emotional stability. If you think about it, if you're not eating right, if you're not sleeping properly, all of those things are gonna derail you even more physically, mentally, and emotionally. So I always start with just the basics again, get decent water into you, get um, decent food into you, sleep as much as you can of a night time, um, get into a regular routine, just pare everything back, take all the pressure off yourself in needing to be a particular way, you know, like, like I said, often um, overwhelm comes with major life changes. Um, I always strip everything back. So instead of doing a 20 minute meditation, I might do a two minute meditation. Um, it's looking at what can I get done today rather than beating yourself up for what I haven't got done today. Does it make sense? So um, I truly hope that's been helpful. Like I said, the overwhelm comes from looking at too much at the one time. 
get everything out of your head, get your brain clear so that you're no longer running loads and loads of white noise. Um, and that's where meditation, obviously long term, it becomes a quadrant two thing simply because it is so helpful in that sense. Um, but there's lots of other things obviously that you can do to improve your well-being. But it's less is more. Don't try and take too much on at the one time or change too much at the one time. Again, that will produce overwhelm in and of itself um, because we're human, right? Like we're so used to behaving or functioning in a certain way. Um, I'm doing a major detox um, this week came with my partner it's uh we're, we're laughing and going oh relationship goals um it will be quite fascinating i'm not sure how my body's going to respond to it um i've kind of been working up to that all week so again i've cleared my table um on monday and tuesday i've minimized my coaching calls that i have i've minimized work um, you know things that I need to do and everything else so it's just looking at like little bits and pieces how can I either make the process easier or more enjoyable um, if there's something that you're fearing that you can lose from doing something different what can I gain instead like start to flip some of these on their head um, because their fears often that present that also can create overwhelm and really at the end of the day they're just unanswered questions um, and it's looking at a specific situation or perspective um, perhaps in a way that's not really serving you as well so number one get it all out get your brain dumped down go through your list do delegate or delete so cross out the things that you need to delete do the things or schedule and plan the things work out when you're going to do them um, so I always get uh, my diary like I said on a Sunday night I go through I write everything in that is not negotiable in terms of if that's a client appointment or that's um, a doctor's appointment or a medical appointment for my kids that I want to go to um, they're old enough to drive themselves there now um, but like all of those different things you know where are your not negotiables put all of those in figure out what are your other times what are your other goals that you're working towards or what are the other things that you're looking to achieve or create and then go through and schedule those things in it will give you a great sense of satisfaction and leave some fudge time and fudge time is just some gaps or some windows in case something else kind of pops up or because sometimes things take a little bit longer than what we've planned now if you're working on a project often people will procrastinate or not get into a project because they're like oh that that's going to take me like four hours i haven't got four hours so oh i just i can't do that i can't do that i can't do that and they're waiting for the time of that four hour block to appear i can promise you it is very rare that somebody would actually be able to create the space for like a four hour block of doing something that's where you want to chunk it down again either into 30 minute or 50 minute blocks 50 minute blocks are the sweet spot scientifically proven of our ability to be able to focus for a measured amount of time before becoming distracted or before losing focus or productivity when you switch tasking so that's doing different things every 10 15 20 30 minutes often we lose a lot of productivity because every time you switch task you actually lose 30% of your productivity because the brain's got to stop what it's doing rethink re-engage with something new and then continue on again that's why 50 minutes is the recommended time um, but chunk down those projects like if it's a big project chunk it down to a doable thing if you're moving house start with a room and then start with a drawer in that room don't try and be thinking of moving the whole entire house at one time um, you know just systematically start to work through and chunk things down to a more measurable amount like I said when we're moving through really strong grief or a major life change um, and life feels Feels overwhelming just in and of itself and I've certainly been in that situation myself just bring it back to the next 30 minutes what do I need to do or what could I be doing in the next 30 minutes that will serve me that will um, move me forward or that is taking really good care of myself so I do hope that's been really helpful for you guys um, please comment below of course if there's um, any other questions or anything else that um, uh, could potentially serve you with this um, it is one of my um, absolute um, joys to help people with this and to really get clarity often overwhelm comes from not being clear on what is most important to you or what your priorities are an um, amazing filter to run that through is um, is this thing either going to help my health my mission 
or my family. Now our mission is what we feel called or what our purpose is. Sometimes it can be our career or our business, but it's like, is this going to improve my life? And if that's not a nine out of 10, I would strongly question, is that actually really, really, really important to you? So health slash wellbeing, family, mission, is it going to improve any of those areas? If not, um, and then really start to challenge yourself and say, is this actually a real priority for me? Um, and well-being often can go into obviously financial well-being as well as physical well-being as well as relationship well-being. Like there's obviously a fair bit within that well-being bit, but is this adding to my life or not? Uh, and pretty soon you can kind of get really, really clear on what your priorities are. Once you're clear on that, once you know where you're going and what your goals are, then you can make better decisions based upon your true values and your true north and where you actually really want to end up. So if that has resonated for you and you want to create some time for yourself to dive deeper, then I can promise you, you'll want to come along to uh, my next retreat, which is the Soothe Your Soul Health Retreat at Vincentia. Um, we're spending three nights there. It's from the 24th through to the 27th of April. Um, it is the long weekend, uh, that weekend as well. So um, definitely reach out to me. I'll pop the video of it below um, if it will load for me. Um, and uh, it'll give you a, a bit of an overview of all the things that we'll be covering. Uh, but we will definitely be having lots of relaxation time as well, some yoga. It is a beachfront accommodation. Uh, super excited to be running this retreat again. Uh, the girls that came to the Byron Bay one had an amazing time. We did have a couple of other different adventure things in there as well. It was a much longer retreat. Uh, but this is still covering a lot of that same content, how to get out of your ego survival mind, come back to your heart center, get absolute clarity on what's important to you, and then how to actually implement that coming back home as well. And so we give you the strategies, we give you the tools. Uh, my partner, Tim, who is a, such an amazing heart-based coach as well, uh, will be joining me as a support to, um, to everybody there. Um, and I'm truly excited about that as well uh, because we'll be able to share a couple of different uh, things potentially that could also help you with chemistry and mind-blowing relationships um, that are really fun, aligned, and uh, and feel wonderful as well. So uh, my absolute pleasure, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I've got loads of gratitude to you all. Uh, and like I said, if it does resonate with you um, or you do feel called or aligned, uh, please jump in. There's only four spots left um, and only uh, three, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, three of those will be, um, sorry, two of those uh, separate rooms um, to the other two spots will be twin share. So if you'd love to come along and you'd love to have your own private room, um, you definitely need to jump in now so that you don't miss out on that as well. So have an amazing day, guys. Loads of love. Catch you later. Bye.